Hey guys, let's go over some trades for today. So, I didn't make a lot of money today, but this is one of those days that would have been uh, potentially a massive red day if I hadn't have kind of controlled myself. So, the momentum was just not in the market today. We saw stuff kind of barely pop up and then just fade all day. There was nothing on the gap scanner worth watching. There was just... Not only was it kind of short bias today, like a lot of the stocks just kind of trended downwards, there just also wasn't a lot of volume. Like a lot of volume just completely died off after the open. Like, like the, the biggest, one of the biggest gappers was IZEA. And I took a, a weird trade on it in here. Um, but then after that, see, it, it didn't really do much. It just kind of went sideways and then kind of downtrended for the rest of the day and didn't really make a big move until the end of the day. So the point is that I'm really happy with myself that I showed some discipline. I always say that. Sorry, someone is messaging me. I'm just going to turn that on to silent. Uh, and I finished up here. Um... 180 and 238 so again there was lots of names but the point today was that um, I didn't force trades like I usually usually would resulting in um, green day rather than a red day and what I think is funny is that I made 238 dollars and it was just kind of like a eh, like, I, like I'm not impressed about that. I'm not like happy about that. But that's just because the market wasn't really allowing a lot of stuff today. And and that's fine. And that's, that's awesome that I feel so bad. Well, not so bad, but I don't feel good about kind of what happened today. And I finished green. So I'm really starting to cut my losers quicker and not over trade as much as I usually do. So the P&L is right here. You can see that I took... A big loss on staff and that brought me red on the day so before staff I was green uh, from CCIH and then I think I had these trades also so I was still up like a hundred and fifty dollars on the day or something and then staff just brought me straight into the red so I was looking for the break of this daily level of uh, 360 so I thought if we made it over 360, we would have a lot of power after that because it's a really strong setup and typically those work really well. So what did I do? I didn't wait for the confirmation. I pretty much top ticked it right here at uh, 358 with 1500 shares. And then I sold for a 20 cent loss down here. Uh, and I that's where I should have sold. I, I probably should have sold sooner. Well, I should have sold sooner, but again, it, it's getting better. I, I didn't hold through an 80 cent pullback, or I didn't hold through all of this waiting for that one minute setup like I did the other day on that one stock that really burned me. I'm not, I can't remember the name, but I'm sure you guys remember if you watched the video. It, um, Because yeah, the first one minute candle to make a new high would have been down here at 35, and that would have been you know, a terrible exit. So... I'm happy that I got it when I should have, but what I did wrong after that was I oversized on JAGX, J-A-G-X. So I took 3,600 shares. Now this stock is cheaper, so that, that kind of offsets the risk because these don't move that fast. They'll move five or 10 cents in a whole minute, whereas these five, six, seven dollar stocks will move 50 cents or even more within a minute. So. I saw the breakout happen on JAGX, um, or sorry, I was in for the break of pre-market highs here on JAGX. I bought in 3,600 shares um, almost all at the same time because I saw the increasing volume and I said, okay, this is going to be it. And if we look on the five second chart, um, I was buying in this consolidation kind of as this pattern was forming again in my head because I use the one minute chart to trade not the five second but I could kind of see this happening and I didn't want to miss it so 5 10 15 20 25 30 seconds later or something the move happened and my plan was to sell into the 80s so I did that 
I had a $335 winner, and that brought me up to green on the day. But you see, I broke a rule by oversizing after a loser. But I did it on a good setup. Uh, but still, I broke a rule. I went from green to red, and then back to green. So I, I told myself, that's it. You broke a rule, you're done. So I didn't trade anything after that. So let's just get right into the video. And I can show you guys what happened here. So I tried to take a quick trade here on CNTF. Um, as it passes through $4, I missed the four entry because I got filled at 405. And then I realized that this wasn't gonna keep going up. So I was a little late to bail out. Actually, no, I wasn't late to bail out. I, I bailed out right here at $4 and, and 403 for a very, very small loss. Um, I actually don't know why my loss was so big. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Someone just came to the door, so I had to uh, I had to answer that. So I got in, or I got, I don't know why my loss was so big here on CNTF. I, I only took a, oh, I guess, okay, a four cent, four, uh, four cent loss on a thousand shares. That's $40. So that wasn't that bad. So I said, okay, today's looking a little slower. Um, I had a trade here on CCIH. I was buying in, kind of following the momentum. I take a starter of a thousand shares here. And then I see as it breaking through 45, I take another thousand shares. And then I try to get to 3000 shares. But for some reason, my order isn't filling. Interactive Brokers is weird like that. They're kind of slow on execution sometimes. And then I get filled, I'm adding to my position on the way up. And then once it gets into the 50s, I get um, I get some of my shares out. A thousand shares bought up at 55. I top ticked that, which was really good. And then I sell shares on the bid on the way down just to reduce my risk and to lock in a little bit more profits. And then I had to sell the rest as it came all the way back down to my entry. So that was that. I made $113 on that. And that wasn't bad. Um, what happened after that? Uh, YTEN, a quick trade for the break of these highs. It never happened, so I bailed out. It's not worth talking about. It's a four cent trade. Um, I really want to show you the staff trade. So. I was chasing the momentum here on staff a little bit. So I bought in here as it pulled back under 350 for the break of 350. And then I was going to sell as it pushed through. It was kind of a sloppy trade and I, I kind of forced it. And then it didn't work out. So I had to bail out and I lost another $40. So I was like, okay, another one of these days. But again, I'm, I'm keeping my losses really, really tight. Uh, even though I, I really shouldn't have been in this in the first place. So there's something to learn from too. Uh, 360 was a critical level, like I said, on the daily. So I said, okay, if we make it through 360, it's game on. So we're at 360 here on the ask. I see the seller being bought up. So I buy in an anticipation that that is going to happen. And I should have waited for the confirmation. All of the signs were there because today was just so choppy that this would probably be massive resistance rather than like a slight bump. So this guy's getting bought up. So I buy into him at 358 and we're already down to 346, 350 and I'm down 200 bucks. And I was like, I literally just top ticked it and bought into resistance like a moron. So I should have waited for the confirmation. I was waiting to see what happened. It was holding the 50s. It came back up a bit. A lot more people jumped on the ask to kind of hold it down. So I didn't sell yet. I was like, eh. Where I should have sold is if it had broken uh, 346, which is the low of this candle. So I should have I should have been out. This is live. I still have plenty of time to get out, and I should have bailed out here for a smaller loss. Um, and I was trying to get out at 345 as it came down. But I got filled at 341. If you see here, Interactive Brokers is, it doesn't get me out. You can see I put the order out, I hit the key, but it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything. 
and it then it doesn't fill me at at 44. I think it's because it creates a limit order when I bail out. But anyways, I got filled at 341. I didn't want to be a part of that at all, and I locked in $300 of a loss. So that was unfortunate. But um. A ABIL was kind of unfortunate too, actually. I took a trade here, and I was up pretty big. I try and get filled. I try and get all my shares out. Um, but again, I, I couldn't get filled. No one was buying the stock up. I only took 700 shares because it was riskier. And then by the time it came back down, I sold for a $20 loss, which was actually a, a really good idea because... Um, just after that, it just tanked. So I'm selling when I should be selling. So I'm happy about that. Let me uh, just close out of this for a sec. Um, so the trade on Jagex that I'm talking about. So I was in for the break of uh, 172, I believe it is. I see us kind of breaking through the 70s. So I said, okay, I'm gonna buy up my shares here. At 170, I bought in 3,000 shares and then added 600 just like that. And we got the breakout a little bit. We bounced off the bid for a second and I'm down. I'm, I'm, kind, I'm a little nervous at this point because I did oversize. Um, but the bids quickly move up and then I'm, I'm well into the green and my plan is to sell into the 180s. So I was risking about five cents based on the bid so i wanted to make about 10 cents on this that might have been a little greedy in hindsight um but as it pushed through into the 180s uh i sold a bunch of shares i tried to get a bunch of shares out here and now i'm down to 2,000 shares um and then i'm selling it kind of as it comes back down here and i get some more shares out at 180 and then I get all my shares out in this area, and then that's the end of that trade. So I know that the market is kind of sketchy. I'm not trying to buy the dip. I'm not trying to do anything crazy like that because uh, I know that that's what gets me burned on these days and turns uh, a green day into a red day. So not happy about today, but still finishing green, which means I'm doing something right. So maybe uh, tomorrow or probably the next week, will uh, bring me better profits but this this could be kind of a shift because crappy follow through today means that tomorrow especially being a friday people are going to be more careful to jump in so i'm not sure if tomorrow is going to be the best day but the point is that i'm going to either have a very small red day or um hopefully another small green day rather than a massive red day so if you guys have any questions comments please leave them below Please subscribe if you enjoy this channel, and with that, we'll see you tomorrow for the last day of the week trading. We'll see if I can have five green days in a row, if I just keep hammering home that discipline, so we'll see you tomorrow, and have a good one.